The new Sennheiser HDB630 is a close-back wireless Bluetooth headphones with noise cancellation that is targeted for audiophiles that are seeking a perfectly balanced neutral sound profile using high-res audio codecs with parametric equalizer for highly customizable fine-tuning. And so far, based on numerous reviews, the HDB630 lives up to its advertised claims of delivering a high-resolution neutral sound and are widely praised by the audiophile community for exceeding the sound quality of not only other wireless noise-canceling headphones in its price range, but also more expensive headphones targeted for audiophiles. And while Sennheiser makes no claims whatsoever with respect to the voice call quality performance on their new HDB630, since many people will be using these headphones for voice calls and conference meetings over Zoom or Microsoft Teams while at home, work, or on the move, it's important that the HDB630 performs well for voice calls. So in part one of this two-part episode, we'll do a quick overview of the voice call quality when connected over Bluetooth using the standard wideband speech codec versus when connected using the included BTD700 dongle using a super wideband speech codec and provide some tips to optimize your voice quality so others can hear you well. And in part two, we'll compare the HDB630 against the Bose QuietComfort Ultra Headphone second generation and against the Sony WH-1000XM6 to see which one of these high-tier wireless noise cancelling headphones provide the best voice call quality. So let's get started. One of the least talked about accessories that come included with the new HDB630 that often get overlooked is the BTD700 dongle, which supports Qualcomm's Aptex, Aptex Adaptive, and Aptex Lossless audio codecs, as well as the standard SBC and LC3 audio codecs, as shown here. When purchased separately, the BTD700 dongle retails for around $60 and comes with a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Now, one of the main benefits of the BTD700 dongle is that not only does it connect to any USB-C supported phone, tablet, or laptop to stream high resolution audio to your HDB630 headphones, it also can pair and work with other Bluetooth headphones. And when using the Sennheiser dongle control app on your laptop, you can select various modes and audio codecs to use with your Bluetooth headphones. For example, here are the available audio codecs that you can select from when connected to the HDB630. And as soon as you start playing music, the highest quality audio codec is automatically selected, which in this case is Aptix Adaptive, since that's the best audio codec currently supported on the HDB630. I do wish the new HDB630 also supported the newer Bluetooth 5.4 LE Audio with LC3 codec and also Qualcomm's Aptix Lossless codec to match not only the same support on the BTT700 dongle, but also match the older and cheaper Sennheiser Momentum 4 True Wireless Earbuds that was released way back in February 2024. Given that these headphones cost $500, Bluetooth 5.4 with LC3 and Aptex lossless support should have been included. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below why you think Bluetooth 5.4 LE Audio with LC3 and Aptex lossless codec support was not included on the HDB630 and whether you think Sennheiser should add support in a future firmware update. Another example is the Bose QuietComfort Ultra Headphones second generation, which uses Aptex Lossless for audio streaming since it's the best audio codec supported on these headphones. A third example is the Dell WL7024 Wireless Premium Headset, which uses the LC3 codec over LE Audio since this is the best audio codec supported on these headphones. And finally, on the Sony WH-1000XM6, even though streaming audio using LC3 over LE Audio is supported on these headphones when connected over Bluetooth directly to an Android smartphone that also supports LC3, unfortunately, when connected to the BTD700 dongle, once you start streaming audio, the codec is downgraded to the SBC audio codec, which has been proven to have worse sound quality than the LC3 audio codec. 
One important disadvantage that we should highlight when using the BTD700 dongle is that it does not appear to support Bluetooth multipoint connections and only supports one paired device at a time. This means that you have to go through the repairing process after switching between Bluetooth devices, which can be very annoying. Hopefully Sennheiser adds support for both Bluetooth multipoint and multiple paired devices list in their next firmware update. Now let's switch gears and talk about voice call quality. Does the BTD700 dongle help improve voice call quality on the HDB630 in comparison to regular Bluetooth? And if so, is it a significant improvement? Well, before we answer these questions, we need to understand the different types of speech codecs used for voice calls over Bluetooth, which is not covered or well understood by many reviewers. So hopefully we can help bring clarity to this topic. First of all, there are two types of Bluetooth standards used for transmitting and receiving audio. The first is Bluetooth Classic Audio, which was introduced early on in the Bluetooth Core specifications, which uses the basic rate and enhanced data rate radio. The second is Bluetooth LE Audio, which uses the low energy radio and was introduced in the Bluetooth 5.2 core specification. The mandatory speech codecs supported by Bluetooth Classic Audio are CVST for narrowband speech, MSBC for wideband speech, and LC3 SWB for super wideband speech. The respective sample rates, frequency response, and hands-free profile spec versions for each of these speech codecs are also shown in this table. The mandatory speech codecs supported by Bluetooth LE Audio are various LC3 codecs for narrow band all the way to full band speech. The respective sample rates and frequency response for each of these codecs are also shown in this table, which vary depending on whether the Bluetooth device is using basic audio profile plus telephony and media profile, or basic audio profile plus gaming profile. One important note to mention is that, with exception of hands-free profile version 1.5 and older, all new profiles shown here support the use of optional speech codecs alongside the mandatory speech codecs. Some examples of these optional speech codecs used today is the AAC ELD codec, which provides at least 12 kHz of frequency response for speech, which Apple uses for many of their voice-centric applications like FaceTime calls. And while there are other examples of optional speech codecs like L2HC and LC3+, the speech codec which we'll be focusing on is Qualcomm's Aptex Voice that is supported on both the Sennheiser HDB630 and the BTD700 dongle, which according to Qualcomm provides greater clarity and in speech intelligibility as well as clearer overall sound quality as shown here in comparison to the MSBC wideband speech codec. Unfortunately, the latest version of the Sennheiser dongle control app does not support showing details of which speech codec is used during voice calls. Hopefully Sennheiser releases a software update soon which will show which speech codec is used for voice calls. But don't worry, since we'll demonstrate shortly how we can implicitly tell which speech codec is used. So now that you have a better understanding of the various mandatory and optional Bluetooth speech codecs, let's demonstrate and compare the voice call quality between the MSBC codec versus the Aptix voice codec as heard from the HDB 630's microphone. For our demonstration, we'll simply do a comparison with the HDB 630 paired over Bluetooth to an iPhone, which will use the mandatory MSBC speech codec for calls that support wideband speech as specified by the Bluetooth hands-free profile version 1.6 and above. We'll then make a Zoom call to a PC, which will record the voice call from the HDB 630's microphone. 
We'll then repeat the same test, but this time with the HDB630 paired over Bluetooth to the BTD700 dongle that's connected to the iPhone's USB-C port, which will use the Qualcomm Aptex voice speech codec supported on both the HDB630 and the BTD700 dongle as allowed by the Bluetooth hands-free profile version 1.6 and above. We'll then make a Zoom call to a PC which will record the voice call from the HDB 630's microphone. So without further ado, let's start our comparison demonstration. This is a test on the Sennheiser HDB 630 connected to an iPhone over Bluetooth using the MSBC wideband speech codec with the microphone mode set to noise removal default on the Zoom Workplace app. This is a test on the Sennheiser HDB 630 connected to an iPhone over Bluetooth using the MSBC wideband speech codec with a microphone mode set to original sound for musicians on the Zoom Workplace app. This is a test on the Sennheiser HDB 630 connected to an iPhone with the BTD 700 dongle over Bluetooth using the Aptex Voice Super Wideband Speech Codec with a microphone mode set to original sound for musicians on the Zoom Workplace app. This is a test on the Sennheiser HDB 630 connected to an iPhone with the BTD 700 dongle over Bluetooth using the Aptex Voice Super Wideband Speech Codec with a microphone mode set to noise removal default on the Zoom Workplace app. So now that you've heard the demonstration, let's quickly summarize our observations of the voice call quality of the HDB 630 when used with and without the BTD 700 dongle. First, there does not seem to be any significant difference in voice call quality between the MSBC codec versus the Aptix voice codec in this initial test. Second, the reason why there is no significant difference is most likely because the HDB 630 microphone frequency response is optimized to operate between 50 Hz and 10 kHz, as shown in Sennheiser's spec sheet for the HDB 630 and therefore cannot take advantage of the super wideband voice call quality benefits of Aptix voice when used with the BTD 700 dongle. Third, change in the zoom microphone mode set into original sound for musicians results in poor voice call quality even though Aptix voice super wideband frequency response of 16 kHz was used as shown here in our demonstration. The reason for this is most likely because the HDB 630 microphone hardware and or the DSP software tune-in for the microphone is not optimized to work well beyond 10 kHz, hence why Sennheiser states 10 kHz in their spec sheet. And finally, to conclude with a tip, always keep the zoom microphone mode set to noise removal default due to A, B, and C mentioned above, and because most voice calls always have some unwanted noise in the background, noise removal is more important in these situations than having the super wideband codec for voice calls as long as the voice call is clear, natural, and noise free. So what do you think of the Aptex voice speech codec supported on both the HDB 630 and the BTD 700? Do you agree with the conclusion stated in this episode? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and informative and click on that subscribe button to be notified for part 2 of this episode where we'll compare the voice call quality of the new Sennheiser HDB 630 against the Bose QuietComfort Ultra Headphones 2nd generation against the Sony WH-1000XM6. So stay tuned for the next Weekend Gear Guide episode.